Some of the most rugged and beautiful scenery in Ireland is in Donegal, the northernmost county and the start of the wild Atlantic Way. Today we'll show you some of the highest sea cliffs in Europe, stunning waterfalls, valleys, mountains and beaches, and even some caves, signal towers and old forts too. This is Magellan. And this is Greyhound. Where we make videos about epic road trips, kayaking, hiking, and other outdoor adventures. Our first spot is the beautiful Malenbeg at the tip of the Sleeve League Peninsula. As you drive in, you'll see Rathlin O'Byrne Island and its lighthouse in the distance. And shortly thereafter, the Napoleonic Signal Tower will come into view. Find a parking spot near the fishing pier, take in the views, and then head down along an unpaved path. Say hello to the sheep and follow their poop through the pasture. And wham bam, thank you ma'am. This signal tower was just one of 81 built between 1804 and 1806 as part of a system of defenses against Napoleon. What's even cooler is you don't need to imagine what their purpose was, because you can see it from here. Over that way to the north is the signal tower in Glencolum Killa. And then across the Sleeve League, right towards the end of the right, there's another one down there. The next spot is around the corner in Malenbeg called the Silver Strand and one of the most stunning beaches in Donegal. Whether you just peer out from the parking lot or head down the path a little, you'll see why this underrated gem of a place is worth the visit. Keep following the path and you'll reach a set of stairs. 174 steps to be precise. And before long, you'll be making your vaunted descent down to this horseshoe-shaped beach. We were here in the summer, and as you can see, it's not that crowded. A very nice place to walk around or relax. Besides, a bit of rest wouldn't hurt considering you do have to head back up. If you get tired, stop and say hello to the sheep, who outnumber the people in Donegal by a ratio of 3 to 1. At the top, take in another view of Rathlin O'Byrne Island again. Remember that signal tower across the other side of the Sleeve League? Now it's time to head in that direction and check out Bunglas Point. Unless you're disabled or part of a tour bus, you've got to use the lower car park and pay five euros, and then walk along this really scenic path for about a kilometer. Here, enjoy the beautiful views, and before long, you'll be at Bunglas Point. And oh, what a viewpoint. This is the Sleeve League, the highest accessible coastal cliffs in all of Europe. It's truly hard to describe or even show how magnificent a view this is. And if you're anywhere near it and only have a little time in Ireland, this should be near the top of your list. There's a small viewing platform and some picnic tables, in addition to a food vendor if you'd like to spend some time here. So let's say you've got plenty of time to witness the grandeur that is the Sleeve League. Well, then what about hiking it? Not far from the Bunglas Point viewing area is a trail that goes up, and then up and up and up and even more up, and then along and through and over and around, and it's absolutely breathtaking. But save some of your breath because you've got more sheep to say hello to while traversing those cliffs. You've also got to say hello to people too, who I hadn't seen at all up to this point. When you're done enjoying the spectacular views, you can head down the Pilgrim's Path to the village of Teelan and grab some delicious food and drink at the Rusty Mackerel. Or you can continue on a ways and finish at the Silver Strand and Malenbeg. Please don't attempt this hike without first learning the routes, especially in bad weather. We've made a video about it that we'll link above and in the description. There's a visitor center in Teelan and there's obviously the internet. Okay, so maybe you're tired, or you're not the hiking type, or you're like, yo, this is vacation, Magellan, calm down, bro. Head to Teelan Pier, situated to the east of the Sleeve League with some pretty nice scenery on its own. During the summer, there are boat tours that depart from here out into the Great Atlantic and give you equally impressive views of the Sleeve League from below. You'll be able to see the signal tower along the way 
and if you look far west in the distance, you can see the signal tower in Malenbeg as well that we mentioned earlier. Otherwise, look at those cliffs. Hard to believe I was up there earlier in the day. You can also see the viewing platform at Bunglas Point above you. Oh, and don't forget to say hello to the dolphins, because there ain't no sheep here. Another easy and relaxing spot is the beach at St. John's Point, on a narrow peninsula of the same name that extends out into Donegal Bay. Much like a good deal of the rest of Donegal, this was a very chill place. Which is also the reason maybe why I love Donegal in general. You get the sense that no one was, is, or ever will be here. It feels untouched. Okay, except those dudes with the raft. There's also a lighthouse further south, but this closed gate and the sign scared us off. We were later told it's unlocked. Located in Ballyshannon, one of the oldest towns in Ireland, is a statue of the greatest guitarist you've never heard of, Rory Gallagher. Not only a virtuoso, he was a soulful blues singer and sold over 30 million records, influenced a who's who of rock guitar gods, famously turned down joining the Rolling Stones in the 70s, and died far, far, far too young. Every year, an international tribute festival in his name takes place here, and we just missed it by a week or so. If you can't pay homage, throw some tunes on while you're driving around. Our next spot, located on the Inish Owen Peninsula, is a stone ring hill fort atop Greenan Mountain called the Greenan of Eilek or the Greenan Fort. With walls as thick as they are high, about 15 feet each, and constructed as early as the 6th or 7th century, this place is pretty rad. Walk around the perimeter, walk around the inside, head up top, or check out the multiple little hidey holes. This place, let's be real, is a kid's paradise. I'd be here all the time running around. And the views are nothing to sneeze at either. Because of its prominence, you can see three total counties, as well as Loch Foyle and Loch Swilly. And I bet this place is pretty sick at sunrise or sunset. Our next destination is the tallest peak in Donegal, Erigal, an iconic quartzite mountain, a part of a series of mountains called the Seven Sisters. At 2,464 feet, it's one of the more popular hikes in Donegal, and is considered a place of worship, although unlike another popular pilgrimage hike, Crook Patrick, there's no nearby church. We decided to just drive around it, which was still cool because we got all different views of it, and this mountain really does look different from every direction. I do hope to hike it one day. At the foothills of Erigal is the Dunluwy viewpoint. Here you can take in the views of Dunluwy Loch, the abandoned church seen near some homes, and in particular, the Poison Glen to the rear. For a while, the Poison Glen was believed to be a legend about a one-eyed giant king named Baylor, who was killed by his son, which split the rock and poisoned the glen. But it was later discovered that it was supposed to be called the Heavenly Glen, but a cartographer mistakenly mapped it as the Poison Glen. Oops. Next stop, the cozy little village of Ardra. Donegal Town can be a bit busy, and some other villages can sometimes feel incomplete, but Ardra is a nice mix of everything. Great food, great pubs, a relaxed atmosphere, and most importantly, great people. Peter and Chris, we hope you are both doing well. Have yourself a nice Irish breakfast at Charlie's West End Cafe, or take in a pint of the good stuff at the Corner House. Or grab a bit of both at Nancy's, where the seafood is on point and the wood and stone gives off homey, welcoming vibes. Glengesh Pass, meaning the Glen of the Swans, is a high mountain pass between the village of Ardra and Glencolum Killa. The road is not only very narrow and windy, but very windy too. 
Here you'll have amazing views of a wide and open valley marked by green hills and countryside that were carved by rivers and glaciers. You may see folks stopping along the road to take it all in, but just know that there's a viewpoint with parking near the top. There's also some informational signs about the Gesh, which was a taboo that when broken led to dishonor or death, notably the Irish hero, Cú Chulainn. West of Ardra, right along the road, is a conveniently located and easily accessible waterfall called Asaranka. And we aren't kidding about it being easily accessible because you park right in front of it. So for those with mobility issues, you don't even have to exit your vehicle if need be. The waterfall itself is an impressive 312 feet high, and yes, you may crane your neck looking up at it. I admittedly haven't seen that many waterfalls in my life, but this one is a no-brainer. Just a touch further west from Asaranka is the Mahra Strand, home to the Mahra Caves and a gorgeous beach. After paying a few euros to park and then walking a short distance through the dunes, it's time to enjoy the beach and explore the caves. Be sure to come here at or around low tide though, or you'll be very disappointed. The caves themselves number at almost two dozen and are all uniquely different. Be prepared to take off your shoes in the event you really want to explore though. Our last place is Glen Colum Killa, located on the western coast of the Sleeve League Peninsula. Be sure to check out the beach, which is very pretty and has a sweet backdrop. Beyond the beach, you can see the signal tower we mentioned in Malenbeg. The last time Greyhound and I were here, we helped up to the signal tower and beyond. You'll get great views of Scalpunic Bay and the mother of all ridges, Sturl. Can't believe people trek across that. Back in town, there's a folk village museum that's a lot of fun too. And be sure to check out the Stones of Ada right across the street. It's a sculpture containing stone from each of the counties of Ireland. And that, my friends, are just a few things to do in Donegal. Did we explore all of Donegal? Definitely not. But hopefully we provided you with a few things you can focus on with a few days to explore and enjoy. Stay tuned for our next video where we visit the remote island of Inishtark for a few days. And be sure to tune in when this trip's all released for a special full-length movie. We'll see you on the trails or in the water.